Hey folks, my guest today is Jacob Lenski. He's building a very cool tool, ecompilot.net. It's a product research tool for dropshippers. He's 20 years old. He's got a degree. He's, he's a 20 year old degree apprentice, meaning he works full time as a software engineer and part time completing university, which is paid for. In his spare time, he's working on this business, a SaaS product research tool for drop shippers. They're pre launch right now, but they've been lucky enough to find some partners who are working on a completely uh, compl complementary tool now, uh, raising a series. A, also working for Affiliate Tree, which is more of a bootstrap effort um, at a social enterprise, looking to do some good. Jacob, are you take us to the top? Yep. All right. How does Ecom Pilot get its first customer? How do we get you to revenue? Yeah. So, um, you know, even though we're pre-launch, right, we've had some revenue already. We've had uh, four paying customers. Um, oh, nice. We've had a... Yeah, we've had, we've had more of a silent launch. Uh, this was kind of my first effort in, uh, in tech business, right? Before this, I was working on an e-commerce business for the past three years. So you probably heard of Amazon selling and dropshipping and things like that. Um, I was doing that uh, as a side income alongside my software engineering job. And that's kind of where I came across the idea for Recon Pilot. Um, yeah. Currently, so it looks know, beautiful. I mean, the site looks beautiful. So, so how did you find these first four customers? So, um, this, okay, yeah. So the way it started is I started uh, building this uh, June last year. Um, we launched around December time for a silent launch where uh, I wanted sort of testers. I wanted some early feedback, right? The last thing you want to do is build in silence. Um, this is where I reached out to certain people in the Reddit uh, and uh, other social media platforms. I feel like my main uh, source of uh, feedback was from mainly Reddit and Quora. That's where I got the first, first four paying customers. Um, apart from that, we've had a uh, hundred free users. Uh, and currently, you know, alongside of our partners, we're doing some market research. We're basically reaching out, uh, trying to, you know, find out if there's any sort of specific niche or market gap we're missing, see if there's any of the problems people want solved with the tool, see, you know, whether we can patch up a, a, a leaky bucket, right, of a, a before Jacob, fully doing what, what, a what kind, what kind of core threads and Reddit threads were you engaging in to find customers? What did you search yep. for? Um, so one interesting, so especially within the dropshipping niche and e-commerce, um, things like Shopify, platforms right any shopify kind of thread uh, uh there's all scope specific dropshipping communities which you could reach out to uh, but yeah mostly think of e-commerce or website building platforms right where would dropshippers and e-commerce sellers hang out and what those first four customers pay it was 27 dollars a month are they still paying no we've had three churn one still paying it's why the, why the ones paying then churn so we've spoke to them. Um, this was early on when we sort of presented the product uh, as, you know, we wanted to get the feedback. We wanted to get some paying customers, see how hard would it be. Um, and the main three churned because one, it was still, you know, it was an early product, right? There's still plenty of things to fix. There's still plenty of things to improve. Uh, the one paying customer has stayed on. Um, he's still happy with giving feedback and he's been using the tool uh, weekly, which is great. Uh, another thing is those three paying customers have now converted to lifetime customers for free, right? We've appreciated their feedback and their early sort of early adopter mindset, and we found them, you know, useful. If if they're not gonna, if they're happy to, of course, provide feedback for a lifetime supply, uh, you know, that's very that's much more useful than a, a customer that's gone, right? Okay, well, you're completing your degree now. We don't want you to have to go get a real job after this. So, how much revenue do you need to start generating so you'll do this full time after after school? Yeah, um, I think you know. Originally, we were aiming for, let's say, you know, 3000 a month, right, um, in, in terms of a profit. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, let's say revenue, uh, you know, our costs are pretty low, right, a SaaS product. Um, the, of course, you know, we're, we're not sure what the customer acquisition cost will be yet, right? That's still more to find out once we launch. Um, but I think the aim would be around six to 7000 right, revenue a month. Um, that was sort of my goal. Speaking with my partners, you know, they're thinking much larger. They're, they're saying, you know, in our first launch, when we do it properly through product hunt, through the correct mediums, we could go definitely to, uh, let's say, 100,000 the first month, right? Uh, and instead of paying, uh, you know, instead of providing a monthly subscription, we provide a lifetime subscription, right, model, uh, especially for early adopter products. That's, that works great for feedback. And when you say we, do you have a co-founder? And if so, how much equity do you still own? Um, no, this is the partners um, that we're speaking with. So, uh, so how much equity do you own in Econ Pilot? Uh, 60, 60%. Who, who, and the partners on the rest? Uh, yes. Um, what, walk me through how that negotiation worked. Like, what are they bringing to the table? Are you, and are you doing all the development? Uh, yes. So I reached out to them in December, mainly because they were working on a complimentary product, Glorify. Um, this was in the same area. What was the, the URL? Issue. Glorify what? Uh, I, I feel like it's glorify.com or glorifyapp.com. You should be able to reach it. 
um, they basically provide a tool for e-commerce sellers to create uh, graphics, right, and uh, marketing uh, images, things like that. And, uh, you know, since this is a complimentary product, I thought it'd be great. They're targeting the same audience. I wanted to learn some more from them. Uh, and one thing that was great is, uh, you know, they eventually reached out and they said, we like your product. How about we just, you know, get on a call, discuss it. And uh, what we started off as being maybe just an integration where we both work together as a complimentary product. They eventually jumped on board and said, you know what, we're happy to be partners. We're happy to, uh, to follow through. Of course, there, you know, uh, I believe uh, Glorify is run. So I, I feel like it's quite a large team now. I think 20 to 30 employees, but um, it's run by mainly sort of two guys, uh, which are, you know, 30 and 40 years old, respectively. So way more experience in business than me. Uh, one thing I know, though, is as a software engineer, I'm able to build a tech stack. Uh, I'm able to, you know, actually create the product. So, so, so uh, Jacob, how, how do you go out and get, you know, you know, 100 new customers, right? Or, or like, that, that's obviously what's going to give you the flexibility to do this full time. So, so what's your best idea there? How do you go do that? Yeah. So I guess distribution is something um, I'm continually learning, right? This is something that's much more based on experimentation, right? Seeing what works. Uh, I believe that, you know, we're one of the strongest sources for uh, bringing people in. Uh, especially within the e-commerce market and especially in dropshipping and Amazon selling will be through affiliate marketing, right? Uh, there's plenty of YouTubers, plenty of content out there covering how to, you know, get into this ecosystem. It's more working with those sort of, um, have you reached out of to people. any of them? Uh, no, not yet. No. What are you waiting for? Like I said, right now we're focusing on the market research, right? We want oh, to do that. Jacob, first you have a, you have a beautiful thing up. You can start selling it. You already have people that are paying for it. You don't need to do thank more you, research. Thank you. You'll research until no. you die. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I can, I can promise you, it's not a, it's not a point of stalling. Um, but it's, uh, yeah. Again, we completely understand that no product will ever be perfect, right? Uh, it's more about you know slowly letting in sort of like a cold, yeah, just basically pouring in some cold customers, seeing their feedback. Why, why are you the one to build change. this? Did you sell a bunch of like on your team? Did you sell a bunch of uh, e like ecom product on Amazon or something? So yes. Um, in 2018, I started as an Amazon seller, right? I was selling lanyards. That's still running that website. Um, and I'm what still was the website? Today. Uh, so if you go on Amazon, uh, it's a listing for Lanyards 25. Um, I don't know. Yeah. How much and, and how, what year did you do that in? Uh, I started 2018 and by and how 2020. Much, we, how much did you sell? Yeah. 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 We had around a revenue of 15,000 pounds, right? Total? Uh, just from like an Amazon product. Total in 2020? Yes. yes. Total. It, it, 20, yeah. Interesting. Um, so what are so people one thing for you now? Like, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to use your tool and basically find new products to, to ship where they can make money on. And, and if that's the answer, how are you going to identify trends when you're competing against these other big tools that have more computing power to find trends faster? Yeah. So, you know, this is where, you know, being a seller and being in the market, understanding your sort of customer base comes in useful, right? I've been a user myself of certain tools, right? I've used Jungle Scout for Amazon selling. I've used the Zeek Analytics for eBay's. When it comes to dropshipping, there's no real market winner uh, and there's no tool that really sort of, you know, properly works, right? There's a lot of tools I've noticed that will do manual handpicked products where every week they'll show you a new product you can sell. Uh, what we're looking for is automated product tracking, right? We track products from a supplier first mindset, right? Why would you try, let's, for example, let's, let's take Jungle Scout, right? Jungle Scout tracks different uh, niches within Amazon, right? The thing is you're missing is, those products are already being sold, right? That means that market is already fairly saturated. If you want to find a good product to sell in e-commerce, you need to find it supplier first, right? One that's not yet being sold on Amazon, one that's yet not being dropshipped, which is where we come in, right? We track products on AliExpress, on CJ dropshipping, on these different platforms, abstract that all for you and provide you basically, you know, assorted, uh, you know, sorted products in terms of demand or in terms of how many stars they have or in terms of how many sales they're getting each week. Why isn't somebody else doing, I feel like there, there's gotta be a bunch of people doing that. So yeah, that, that's one thing I was expecting. Um, when I originally joined, I used the manual uh, sort of handpicked products. There's a uh, which which was useful, but one thing I noticed is you know the automated tracking so much better. Um, I feel like th there was a competitor, I believe Niche Scraper, which also aimed to basically track products on AliExpress. The main thing you're missing with AliExpress though is you know th these are Chinese products. These are quite low quality. It's important to include other selections, so such as CJ dropshipping. Uh, dropshipping UK and other sort of suppliers within US. 
Does that make Got sense? It. So that's your, yeah. So we'll see if that ends up. I mean, I just think that there are, there are software teams much larger than you that can go scrape the same data. What I'm hunting for in these questions is trying to find what your unique advantage is that you can really capitalize yeah. on. So maybe it is one of those things. Maybe you just out execute them. Maybe you go beat a team of 10 engineers. I hope you do it. I think that'd be great. Yeah. What do you want to hit I, by I the think... end of the year? What do you want to hit by the end of the year in terms of a uh, number of customers? Um, yeah, we're definitely aiming for around 8,000 customers. And the main reason for that is by when? You know, during, by December. By end you of year. 8,000 8, yes, paying how yes. much per month? Uh, not 8,000, 1,000 paying customers. Oh, 1,000 um, paying 27 yeah. a month? No, no. Uh, lifetime fee, so $97. Why do you say the lifetime fee? If you do a lifetime fee, you're ruining all your SaaS economics. You can't make hiring decisions. You can't do this full time when you graduate because you have to do new revenue every single month. Why mm -hmm. sell lifetime? So the important thing about selling lifetime is one, you capture the customer, which then can provide your feedback over the years, right? And you don't Why? have to worry they, about that. They pay, they pay and, once. Why would they keep giving you feedback five years yeah, yeah. from now? No, because then you don't have to be worrying so much about churn. Does that make sense? Well, no, because they can't churn because they already paid you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Of course you can't churn. If I, if I have a one-time fee, you also don't have any recurring revenues. Right. And customers yeah. that love your product have no problem paying every single month. I just wonder, like, why would you give up all that? And also, by the way, it's not true. Right. Because if you sell a lifetime plan, what you're going to be around and you're going to support this no matter what in 50 years. Like, no, it's going to end at some point. So there is no lifetime, which is like, it's sort of yeah. a false sale. Uh, one thing that you notice within sort of the, I guess, um, early startup ecosystem is uh, one thing that lifetime provides that, I guess, a monthly subscription doesn't is, you know, one, when I speak about churn, of course, right. When they're, when they're paying, let's say, a uh, hundred pounds instead of 27 pounds, right? That's the four months they're paying up front in a way. Um, one that helps you build capital much faster from my understanding. And the second thing is right now when we're focusing on feedback and the early adopters that are happy paying more, they're happy being more engaged in feedback on the tool. That's who we're focusing on, right? Eventually it makes sense for all SaaS companies to go into a model where it's monthly payments. But until you've, you know, really well, that's what is out, SaaS. that is what SaaS is. Software mm -hmm. as a service, as a service. Like it, it continues over time. Doing a lifetime thing one time, it's great for like an initial cash bump, which is fine. I get that. But like relying on that as your model to me is just silly. Uh, it doesn't allow you to build a meaningful big company or hire great yeah. talent around you to build a better product. Yeah, I, I completely understand that. And I think, you know, this is sort of advice I've gotten from my partners, right? They've started off as a lifetime fee subscription model. Um, and eventually they're looking to move to, I guess, a monthly subscription model. The benefit yeah, of doing that? a lifetime. What, what, what is a subscription? Subscription implies like you're subscribing and you're paying multiple times. So what, yeah. you're going to come back a second lifetime and pay for another lifetime? It's, no, it's a, it's a one-time fee. No, no. Yeah, yeah. You're giving them the product for life. Like it's not a subscription. Yeah. When I say lifetime subscription, I didn't mean lifetime subscription. I mean lifetime deal. And then they're going to move to a subscription model, right? Yeah. The benefit of doing lifetime, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll just reiterate, is get you know because those customers are paying more, they're much more likely to be engaged, right? It's a more, like you said as well. You get that early cash flow, uh, which is beneficial. But uh, yeah, I think the focus is on getting those early adopters that are happy, you know, being part of the lifetime of tool, right? They're not only buying the tool that's current that you, you currently have; they're also investing in the future of the tool. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. I've heard this like, of course, I've heard this like a thousand times. I'm just saying like, I've, I've seen an end in like tragedy. Educo is a good example of this. Came on, was bragging about how he made all this money on AppSumo and he shuts down the company six months later. So he just basically frauded all those people. He sold a lifetime plan because it only lasted mm. six months. Like it's just, it doesn't make me feel good. Like I just don't think it's a good way to treat people. And you don't know, like you might feel really good right now, but in eight months you want to do something different. And you're going to be like, well, quick, I can't do something different because I saw these lifetime plans. Yeah. That being said, I don't, I'm not against this. I think it's a good way to do like market research. So I'm rooting for you. We're over time though. So let's wrap up with the famous five. Number yeah, one, Jacob, what's your favorite book? Uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And number two, uh, what is your, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, Hopin CEO, Johnny Borofa. Yeah, he's good. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a business? Um, I have, well, Notion. 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 By the way, Johnny never sold lifetime plans, just saying. Number four, how, <laughs> many, hours, how many hours of sleep do you eat every night? Um, I look, I am for eight. Eight. And what's your situation? I, married, single kids. I'm going to assume not married and no kids, right? Yeah, just the right. relationship. 20 years old. What's something you wish you knew when you were 10? Um, the fact that even you know stable businesses are constantly testing things, they're constantly figuring things out on the way. There's never that eureka moment where you feel like you understand everything. 
Guys, he sold $15,000 worth of lanyards online in his teens, now launching ecompilot.net to help other people find profitable things to sell on Amazon using other sources like Alipay. We'll see if it works. He had four beta customers, one still active, paying $27 bucks a month. His goal is 1,000 customers by the end of this year. Jacob, we're rooting for you. Thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks a lot. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares backend dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.